Hi, Bob Hot Rod Roar from Cluffy. I want to talk about zone valves now. This is a very simple valve, but there's millions of these sold. We sell a million of these valves, so it's a very common valve and there's a lot of unique features that Cluffy can show you on this. So we're going to start out, we offer a bunch of different zone valves. We have a motorized zone valve, we have a heat motor type of zone valve, and we have a motorized ball valve. But we're going to talk mainly about our Z1 valve, our flapper type of valve. So here's what we've got. And I'm going to start out with the um, talking about the body. And I'm going to bring them all in here because we offer these in a couple different configurations. But let me start with this cutaway because it really explains the features and the benefits of the Cluffy valve. It's a forged brass body, so it's a high pressure. It's a 300 PSI forged body. It's not a cast brass. It's got a much bigger volute than most of the other brands on the market. And what the big volute does for you is when flow comes through this valve, it sees basically a wide spot in the road and it slows down. So that makes it easier for that valve to shut off against the fluid flow going through it, is what you allow that velocity to slow down by coming into a big chamber like that. Now let's look inside and see what we've got in here. So inside here we've got a peroxide cured paddle in here. And what that allows us to do is this valve can be, uh, let's call it a universal valve. It can be used on chilled water, it can be used on hot water, and it can be used on low pressure steam. So what that does is for the installer and for the wholesaler, they only have to keep one body on the shelf because this one body covers all three applications. No need to stock different bodies. So to do that we make some uh, pretty unique features in here. Again, the peroxide cured on the flapper there so it can work on those extreme temperatures. The stem on it, it's a stainless steel stem. It's not a plated brass stem. And so what that does, if the stem wears in there, you're not going to wear the plating off and have a leak. See if we can see it in there. We put a double O-ring on our stem here, and we put a snap ring on. The snap ring's on there because you can replace that stem. The other unique thing about this is we can take the bottom of this valve off. It's got a fine threaded plug with an O-ring, and that's what allows us to get in there and replace that stem if we had to. You take the snap ring off the top, drop it out, you can replace the stem and the flapper. We offer that as a repair kit. But by also making this bottom uh, removable, I don't know if I've got one here that I can get apart, what that allows an installer to do is occasionally you're going to get some debris coming through your system. It could be um, Teflon tape that got ended up in the system or little solder balls when you solder a copper pipe together. Well, that's going to work its way through and it's going to get stuck between the paddle and the seat sometimes. So what you can do with the Cleffy valve by having this fine threaded uh, port on the bottom that you can remove, you can get in there and see what's going wrong with the valve. So if you have a, a zone or a loop or something that's overheating, good chance you've got something stuck between the seat and the flapper. So that's a very nice feature of that valve that you won't find um, on other products. So that's basically what the body has to offer. Now we offer that in a three port version too, so it can be used as a uh, bypass or a diverting valve. So basically what we do is we take that bottom port, um, bottom plug off, and we give you an additional port. Um, we offer this body in a, uh, gosh, a, a sweat version from half to inch and a quarter. It's offered in a uh, NPT version. It's offered in an inverted flare as well as an SE flare. So we've got a body that covers every application. Here's an example of our large uh, inch and a quarter sweat version. Notice also there's going to be a little tag, a couple things on the tag is the direction of flow going through it, A to B, and with a little bit of arrow on it. So the flow's got to come through this that direction or you're going to have a problem with that flapper not operating properly. Also on that tag it's going to have a C C V number on it and that's the amount of GPMs that will flow through this valve with a 1 PSI pressure drop. We offer this valve in uh, three different versions, uh, different CV rates for different applications. If you need a higher shutoff pressure valve it'll typically be a lower CV. So we've got a nice um, range of uh, bodies available there for the Z1 valve. Now let's go to the top end the driver of all this. And there's our Z1 actuator. What I like about this is it comes off and goes on very easily. So if you have to remove this for service and it just comes right off the top like that. You push the button, pull it apart. That's a great feature because if you ever have to service this or replace it, push the button, take it off. A couple things with the actuators here. Let me show you what's going on here. We've got a polycarbonate case and we do that for a number of reasons. Number one, as a hot fluid goes through this brass body, this body's going to get warm and that heat's going to transfer up and it's going to get up into your motor and up into your switch and up into your gear train here. Well, by going with a polycarbonate, we kind of insulate that temperature from getting up to the brass, uh, up into the mechanism of the valve, the motor, the lubrication that's up in there. The other thing that'll do for you, if you use this on a chilled water application and it condenses or sweats, by having a polycarbonate, now you're not going to have any rusting or corrosion going on. And we carry that through with the aluminum on the top. So if you look at this, we've got the polycarbonate case, we've got aluminum up here, and then all the rest of the components are stainless steel. So there's nothing on this valve that's going to rust and uh, corrode or, or um, 
you know, deteriorate over time. Probably what I want to do now is jump into the inside of this. Let me show you why I'm right here, though. We offer this as a terminal or as a lead. Some guys prefer to have the terminals if you're going to wire this to zone uh, a relay box, for example. You get the terminal strips like that, and now you can put whatever length lead you need on there. Other guys prefer it to come with the leads. Notice this is a four lead um, actuator. So two of these are going to drive the motor open. The other two are end switch. The end switch can be used to trigger your boiler, turn on a pump, uh, turn on a uh, relay in a control box. So um, a four wire configuration is available with the terminal strip or with the leads. So your choice on that. Let's get up inside of it because this is really where the um, rubber hits the road on this valve. And I've got a couple of them that have cut away in different uh, variations here to show you. So I'm going to bring in a typical zone valve that you're going to see on the market. I'm going to show you why there's a big difference in the drive mechanism in the cleffy. So a very common valve on the market will use the motor and they've got what we call a little pinion gear on the motor and it's just a little brass gear and that engages to what we call a sector gear. Well in this uh, you'll notice that's a very thin stamped sector gear and what can happen over time if something gets stuck in the valve or the valve starts to corrode a little bit and gets a little wear in it, what's going to happen is you've got the potential to strip that gear off because you don't have a lot of surface bearing area on that, um, that gear train mechanism in this type of valve. And also on this brand here, they use two pullback springs. Those are just kind of more like a garage door spring, and over time they lose their tension just like the spring on your garage door does. So what we do with Cleffy, we've really engineered this because we really thought about what goes wrong with the zone valve and how we can make this the very best one on the market. So this is what we're doing inside here. So instead of having just a stamped uh, sector gear out of brass, we actually built a little gear train in here. And I like to think of this as like a, um, maybe a transmission or a transfer case in your pickup truck, where we've got a 20 to 1 gear ratio that we can build into this. So now instead of just having one gear on a motor and one gear on the sector to drive that valve open, we actually build a reduction. And notice how much thicker our gears are. We put a lot of um, engineering into that gear to make it much stronger. Now what that will allow us to do is now we can put a higher um, tension spring, a higher close off spring because we've got more ability to drive that open and close with a better gear train and the 20 to 1 reduction. So the other thing by putting this type of spring, and I think I can pull this out of here, is this type of spring um, we can wind it more accurately. With the other pullback springs that I just showed you on the other type of valve, um, you're kind of limited by what the spring tension that they send you. What we do with this spring is we put it in there, we flip this over and on the back there's a little um, square plug in there. We actually, with a torque meter, we wind the tension on that spring. So every one of these is going to come from the factory with exactly the right amount of spring tension. And it's going to have a higher spring tension. It's going to have a higher shutoff pressure than most of the valves on the market because we do have a better spring and we can wind that spring and we've got a better drive mechanism to be able to open that up. So that's what's going on inside here. One other thing that's really interesting about this valve that I don't think you're going to see anywhere else is what we call a loss motion gear. And I don't know if you can see the bottom of that, but but there's a 270 degree uh, groove that's been routed out of the bottom of that gear and it rides on a little pin on that. I'll hold that steady so you can see that. That little pin rides into that lost motion slot. What happens when a zone valve closes? It's got all that inertia from the spring that winds up in the motor. So when the valve, the power goes off to the valve and the motor has to go closed, that motor is going to go closed and it's going to bounce back and forth a couple times. We've got a little video of that showing that motor bouncing. Well, every time it does that, it's putting a tension and it's putting a um, on the shaft of the motor, it's putting a sideways torque or tension on that and eventually the bronze uh, bearings or bushings that that motor shaft runs on are wear because it's getting all that torque on there. So that's what this lost motion, that's the key to this lost motion. It disengages that inertia, that spring closing that motor from the motor so you're not going to see that motor bouncing back and forth and putting all that sideways torque on the bearing. So when you put all this together, I think you'll agree that there's some pretty unique features. I talked about the case in that we use the polycarbon on the bottom and the aluminum. So think about what happens now when this is on the body and you've got a high temperature fluid going through that body, that heat's going to conduct up through the stem. Even though you've got a polycarbon to break in the um, a thermal break there to prevent the temperature from getting up into it. Some of it's going to go up through that stem and where is it going to end up? Well it's going to end up into the top a section that's in the motor and on this motor mounting plate. So by making this out of aluminum we do two things. Number one, the corrosion issue goes away. Most of the other brands are a, um, a steel that they plate and they break it and then they rust on the ends. Well, the aluminum prevents that from happening, but it also has a little bit of a heat dissipator. If you ever had a Mac screen on your, uh, on your computer, the back of it gets warm to emit the heat off there. Well, that's what this aluminum is going to do. So it acts as a heat emitter as well as uh, the aluminum being a, uh, a product that won't rust or corrode on you. So that's what we've got in the Z1. Um, 
the end switch. We've got a reed switch type of end switch in our 24 volt um, actuators. And what that does, it's a hermetically sealed switch, so we don't get any contaminants getting into the points on the switch. So it's going to be a much more robust switch, especially in conditions where you've got the potential to get dust or dirt or, or byproducts of combustion that get into the points on the switch. So um, the reed switch is a much more uh, efficient switch at doing that. So that's the Z1 valve from Calafi. It's one of the finest valves out there. We've sold over a million of these. We rarely get them back. We're very proud of this valve.